Hello everyone and thanks for joining in. Uh, my name is Don Pinto and uh, I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Couchbase Server. I assume that uh, you guys are all familiar with relational databases and have used a relational database like MySQL to build your apps. But this webinar is about NoSQL and what we will talk about today is what you need to think about when building your app on NoSQL. So we'll start off uh, taking a quick look at uh, what is driving NoSQL adoption understand how documents are modeled in NoSQL and where NoSQL technology is the best fit. We'll also uh, close this with a run-through example of uh, one such app that uh, you might be always familiar with. That's the J2EE uh, Pet Store app, uh, which is very famous in the Java and uh, Oracle communities. Uh, some housekeeping notes. Uh, so I will stop uh, midpoint during my webinar to take questions and any pending questions, then we'll address them uh, towards the end. So with that, let's get started. So relational technology has been around for quite a while, and there's uh, a ton of applications built around them. Uh, there's also a, bit, a huge ecosystem around these databases, all the way from ETL to BI to reporting tools, so name it. So why are users moving forward and adopting NoSQL technology? which is frankly very early in its stages of product maturity. So you guys are here because you want to build an app. In this case, you know, I have a screenshot of uh, the Java Pet Store app. And uh, you might be currently using a, a relational database. So everyone is familiar with this uh, schema diagram where uh, data in relational databases are stored in tables. And uh, uh, you, have a, you may have a very complex uh, relationship between different tables uh, in your schema. And your database uh, has gotten a little big, or maybe huge, and definitely complicated. So uh, if you have seen or noticed some of these problems, you're not alone. Uh, we did a survey uh, a couple of years back, and uh, we tried to understand what are the two big drivers for NoSQL adoption. And guess what? Uh, the top two drivers for NoSQL adoption were uh, the lack of flexibility, uh, the fact that relational databases, um, using relational databases needs you uh, to, uh, to make your data fit into these tables, that's rows and columns, and also uh, the inability to scale out uh, a relational database. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, NoSQL databases, but before we jump into document databases, let's take a quick look at uh, the sampling of NoSQL databases that we have. So foundationally, every NoSQL database, uh, you know, at a high level, uh, has this concept called the key value store. And uh, what we mean by a key value store is uh, the, the primary key um, identifies uh, the piece of data, and the value is just uh, a blob, right? So it could be, you know, the, a document body or any kind of binary uh, data uh, that is stored uh, as a value. Uh, document databases, columnar and graph databases add more functionality. So they add functionality like indexing and querying. And that's what you would expect from something uh, like a database. So many would, uh, let's start from you know, uh, reading the slide from, the, uh, from, the top, uh, from left to right. And you can see that uh, 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 first we have memcached, right? So you know, many would argue that memcached was a precursor to all NoSQL databases. Um, in theory, it is uh, uh, an in-memory key value store. We also have things like Redis, and with Redis, uh, it's also an in-memory key value store, but you can do uh, a lot of operations uh, on simple data structures like lists and sets, and those are processed in memory. Uh, now, as we move towards the right, uh, we, go, uh, we go and see many more databases, and uh, what we'll be focusing on uh, are document databases. So Couchbase is a NoSQL distributed document database. It uses JSON uh, as, a as a document model. So data in Couchbase is stored as JSON documents. And um, being, um, being a distributed system, uh, uh, a Couchbase cluster consists of many nodes, or many server nodes. And it is horizontally scalable. Uh, data is replicated for high availability. And it also includes an inbuilt uh, uh, built-in cache. So what we mean by that is uh, each node uh, in the cluster has an in-memory object managed cache, and uh, using this in-memory object managed cache um, is very uh, is great because you get the high throughput and low latency uh, you want to obtain from a database, uh, a NoSQL database like Couchbase. It also has uh, uh, 
an append-only uh, storage uh, system and provides you things like indexing and querying as well as incremental map reduce so you can build your views incrementally. And uh, like Couchbase, you also have uh, uh, other uh, NoSQL document databases like MongoDB that stores uh, data in BSON format, has uh, master save replication, and ad hoc querying, uh, which can be used with indexes. And towards the right, you see more columnar databases with store, like Cassandra, with store data in columnar fashion, and Neo4j, which is a graph database. So uh, now uh, the remaining of the slides will focus on uh, addressing uh, document databases. So document data oriented databases are in some ways uh, extensions to key value stores. So uh, in a key value store, you, you typically have a key and you have a value. And um, uh, with, a, with a document database, you build on top of that and you can create indexes on your data. And using indexes, you can ask specific questions uh, to the database of, of the content of of your documents which are stored within the database. So um, at a high level, um, in a document database, you have, uh, uh, you have a bunch of documents, and each document can have a different schema. So as you can see on the picture shown uh, on your right, uh, what you see is a sample document with um, a list of attributes. And these attributes can be strings, uh, can have uh, values such as strings or uh, numbers or other kinds of objects. And uh, the structure for these documents uh, could be either hierarchical or sparse or nested. So as you can see here, we have a fairly uh, complex structure in this uh, sample JSON document that you can see. And uh, these documents have a unique key, also called as a document ID. And uh, using a document ID, you can reference that particular document. So when you store that document in Couchbase, you, you specify the key to store it in Couchbase. And when you want to read that uh, document from Couchbase, you specify that key, and then you can read the document from Couchbase. Okay. Uh, you can also create views uh, on these documents. So uh, what happens with that is uh, uh, you can create views uh, on all the documents that you store in Couchbase. And these views are built using incremental map reduce uh, uh, functions, which are written in JavaScript. And uh, you can also build them incrementally. So this means that uh, uh, you don't have to recompute uh, your views from, uh, from scratch if you, have, if you add more documents um, uh, into your system. Uh, Couchbase also pro uh, scales horizontally. So we, uh, we, sh uh, we auto-shard auto um, uh, documents and spread them across the cluster. And we also replicate these documents uh, for higher avail availability in case of node failure. So next, let's look at uh, some of uh, the comparison of the data models compare in comparison to uh, relational databases. So uh, on this slide, you can see on the left, we have uh, the relational data model. And uh, as you guys are all familiar with this, the relational data model um, consists of a highly structured table organization, which means that you have uh, rows and columns, uh, and your data has to fit within these rows and columns when they are added, uh, when you add a, a piece of data into a relational database system. And uh, the, uh, it's very hard to uh, you know, change the format of these uh, of these records once you create the table. So once you create a table, uh, you have to make sure that your data really fits into uh, these rows and co uh, columns of, uh, which is defined in the table. Uh, with a, a NoSQL document database, what you get is uh, you can store data uh, as a form, as a bunch of documents. And these documents are um, in JSON format. And as I said earlier, uh, these documents can uh, consist of you know, uh, a nested uh, data format or hierarchical or sparse data format. And one thing cool about uh, uh, NoSQL no document databases is, is these documents do not have to have a, a fixed structure. So uh, what that is, is each of the documents could have varying structures, and um, uh, they can all coexist within the same database. It's not like the table where every record should adhere to the same uh, structure that is defined by your table. So next, look, uh, next let's look at uh, an example of a user profile. Uh, so if you're building a user profile, and uh, typically uh, a, a very simple example of uh, could be having two tables where you have user info and address info. So uh, on the left, you see. Uh, uh, user info is stored in the user table, 
and to get complete information for uh, a given specific user you have to th uh, theoretically get a join between uh, uh, the user table and the address table and uh, what you have here is you have a foreign key in the user table which is the zip id and that zip id helps you link uh, the user the, the records in the user table to the to the matching address uh, records in the address table now uh, joins uh, in um, are, are common in relational databases but one thing you need to understand is they are expensive and what i'm showing you here is just a simple example of two tables but uh, it, it, in real life you may have an application where you have tens or even hundreds of tables that need to be um, you know joined together to give you the result back in your app so comparing this with uh, you know a nosql document database uh, where you would have uh, a json document and this json document um, you know consists of all the information for that given user so uh, notice that uh, how this json document uh, encapsulates all the information for the uh, that is stored in the user table as well as uh, the geo info so within a single document you have all the all the information for that particular user and uh, this is this is cool because it kind of uh, avoids uh, the need to have joins that you have to you know go across uh, these multiple different tables uh, to be able to you know put together uh, a single record for a single user and uh, with a single document all your data is in exactly one document so you do uh, you would do a get operation uh, to get this document from couchbase and you would get all the information you need for a given user now uh, let's build upon uh, you know the example uh, the you know the user profile example and let's assume that uh, uh, we want to build a social app so the social app uh, pretty much has a user table uh, say a photo table the photo table could have you know the favorite photos you took during your you know your summer break uh, you have the status information uh, you have uh, you know your university affiliations table to store affiliations to universities and uh, let's uh, let's say that you know you have this app running it's on relational database uh, and suddenly you know you want to take this uh, app global so uh, what it means is you would have to create a country table and it stores all the country information and uh, what's more expensive is the fact that you have to alter uh, uh, you know the, uh, the other tables to store uh, this geolocation right uh, so notice that um, you know we had to add the country id column uh, in the user table the photo table status and affiliations table right uh, to be able to uh, geo tag uh, the information that we uh, have stored there uh, you may uh, just looking at this example you may just wonder oh this is easy but uh, you know in reality if you have millions of users in um, uh, in your user table uh, the alter operation on the table is an expensive operation in a relational database and could take you know typically you know sometimes several hours to complete right and that also it kind of blocks a lot of activity that you would have on your relational database now let's take that problem and see uh, you know what would it, what would it be like if you want to make the same change with the document database if you had to make the same change uh, you know using a document database uh, since uh, you know you have all this user information stored in a single document for a given user all you have to do is just add the information to that particular document now let's say you know just 300 uh, users opted into this new geo feature uh, that you, you you just shipped um, that would translate to just updating uh, you know 300 documents to you know to geo tag them for the users who opted into this feature which is different than a relational database where you have to change the table structure alter the table structure uh, add the columns and no matter what if no matter if the users opted into this feature or not they would still you know you would still waste space uh, for the geo information the for that particular record so where is uh, no uh, where is no sql uh, a good fit like what kind of applications uh, 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 would consider using something like no sql uh, or is is no sql a fit for all kinds of applications so what we have seen uh, you know uh, uh, so far is we have uh, you know the internet companies who have uh, you know adopted uh, no sql technologies as well as enterprises so within uh, you know the internet companies you would have you know social gaming ad networking um, e-commerce content management you know uh, and i will go into some of these uh, 
uh, some slides later, which explains why for some of these use cases it makes sense to uh, to use something like a NoSQL technology. Within enterprises, you would have communication, retail, and so forth. And uh, you know, these are some of our logos. Uh, it's not all of our customers, uh, but uh, uh, just a, a, a subset of our customers who are using um, a Couchbase server as their new, as their NoSQL database. And uh, we have more than 300 customers with uh, over 5,000 production deployments worldwide uh, using Couchbase server. So what are the data characteristics? What, what is it that made these uh, folks, uh, you know, uh, from an application perspective, uh, select a NoSQL database like Couchbase? And uh, in the next few slides, I'll kind of, I'd like to walk into some of these. Right? So the first thing is about uh, uh, data-driven characteristics. So when we say data-driven characteristics, it's the fact that some of the applications require you to store uh, hierarchical information, sparse in information, uh, you know, records of varying length, which can change any time. Um, uh, some apps also require you to grow very fast, you know, support, uh, you know, thousands of users, um, you know, rapidly. And uh, those are, you can think about those apps and some, some apps like social games where you don't know, uh, you know, who's going to come uh, to your and play your game tomorrow. And that's where you would see, you know, um, a NoSQL database, uh, the best fit. Uh, you would also have apps which have, um, uh, which uh, get and process a lot of uh, feed streams. So uh, one attribute about feed streams is the fact that uh, uh, streams could change, uh, you know, the format of the streams could change, uh, you know, uh, rapidly, they could evolve rapidly. And uh, that uh, the, the volume of these feeds is also high. So you need a database that can uh, not only adapt uh, to the changing, uh, changing uh, schema structure, of these feeds, but also the fact that uh, they should uh, uh, be able, the database should be able to sustain that throughput of the feeds that is coming in. So that's where you'll see Couchbase uh, uh, as a good fit. So you also have uh, performance driven characteristics and by performance driven characteristics we mean the following. Um, so sometimes you need a database, uh, you know, uh, that requires to provide you with low latency. Uh, a typical example of that is, um, you know, in the in the ad targeting space. In the ad targeting space, uh, you know, with, with sub-millisecond response time, you need to get, uh, you know, you know, you need to fetch the user profile and the ad information, and that's where you'll use some. You, you'll consider using something like uh, a NoSQL database. You also want in those scenarios high throughput. You know, 200k ops per second. That's the kind of throughput you would expect. Uh, your ad platform to deliver, and th which means that your underlying database should be able to deliver that throughput to your ad platform. You at sometimes you want you know to support large number of users. You know you have uh, thousands of users that you want to uh, you know support, and that's where you'll you know consider using a NoSQL database. Uh, in terms of workload, you know uh, uh, with a NoSQL database like Couchbase, we also uh, you know allow you to give you this performance characteristics with you know, read, mixed, and heavy, uh, you know, read, write workload. So with a, with a different, you know, uh, spectrum of workloads, uh, we guarantee this uh, low response, low response time and high throughput. So that's, uh, that's an, uh, that's a typical um, uh, example where uh, you would, you know, due to the performance driven characteristics of your app, you would consider something uh, like Couchbase. So just to summarize, what are the common use cases at a high level, uh, you know, of a NoSQL database like Couchbase? So uh, start with, you know, social gaming. So, so with social gaming, um, uh, social games store a lot of player and game information in Couchbase. So that's where, you know, Couchbase would, um, you, you know, fit in. You have mobile apps. So with mobile apps, there's a lot of mobile content that needs to be stored in Couchbase. And you, you see, uh, you know, our customers like Kobo, um, who's storing a lot of mobile app content uh, in Couchbase. And then you have our targeting. Customers like AOL use Couchbase, uh, you know, for storing user information. And they store user information that requires fast access. So you require this sub-millisecond response time, high throughput uh, for your ad platform. Uh, session stores. So if you're building a simple web app or, you know, any kind of e-commerce website, you know, you, you have, uh, users and you have sessions associated with these users and uh, Couchbase can be used as a session store. So it can be used to store session information on the server side for these users and Couchbase also has a cool feature called time to live expiry. So with, uh, with the time to live expiry, you can set an expiry for a given document uh, which captures the session information for the user and uh, after that, uh, you know, after that time span expires, that 
document is automatically deleted. So it's like the session, you know, you, you want to, instead of doing a manual delete for your session, it automatically gets deleted uh, by Couchbase after a set time. Period. So that's where a session store, uh, you know, uh, could be used, uh, could be built upon uh, using Couchbase. Then you have user profile stores. So with user profile stores, you can think about storing, you know, um, email addresses or tokens, things like that um, in, in a NoSQL database like Couchbase and then tying it with your authentication system. Right, uh, you see customers like TuneWiki who has done something like this. There's also the high availability cache. Um, so uh, given the fact that I mentioned that Couchbase uh, has replication, so every document in Couchbase uh, is replicated up to three times to, uh, in other nodes in the cluster. So if one of the node fails, then you know these documents, uh, this document can be uh, can be fetched from these other nodes. So due to that reason, you know, uh, Couchbase is a great high availability cache, right? I mean, uh, if you have problems like cold cache that you're facing uh, with the uh, with Memcached, Couchbase is an ideal replacement for uh, that kind of cache. Then there is a content and metadata store application, and this is a great use case where you um, you store metadata for your content in Couchbase, and you store the actual content blobs in something like a CDN. Um, and due to Couchbase's uh, integration with Elasticsearch, what you can do is you can then use uh, you know the power of Elasticsearch to search uh, you know on these documents that are stored in Couchbase. So you can see you know customers like uh, McGraw-Hill, which is building a learning portal um, uh, on Couchbase with this idea. And definitely, you know, the last thing, third-party data aggregation, you have a bunch of feeds from social media and various other sources which are coming in, and you need to be able to process these feeds fast and store these feeds fast. So, uh, you know, you see examples of customers like Samba Cloud, who's trying to do something like this. So this is a midpoint uh, uh, slide, so I'd like to stop uh, to answer uh, some questions now. Thanks, Don. Uh, as a reminder for folks, if you have a question, just type it in the GoToWebinar panel at this time, and we'll pull up and address questions. We have one really good question from Michael. Uh, are there certain use cases that document databases are not particularly well suited for? Um, so, um, so document databases like Couchbase is very good for things like. Um, uh, you know, OLTP uh, applications, right? I mean, something that required, you know, fast access, uh, low latency, um, you know, high throughput, uh, you know, high scalability. Those are things where, you know, you would consider, you know, using a database like Couchbase. Uh, we don't really fit well right now within the analytics space. So if you're doing some kind of, uh, you know, a batch analytics. So that's where you would have things like Hadoop. Uh, you know, uh, Hadoop kind of things that fit in. And that's why we kind of, uh, 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 we, we have connectors from Couchbase to these analytical platforms like Hadoop, uh, uh, which will be able to, you know, do that analytical processing in an Hadoop-like environment while keep the, you know, keep the data that is, that requires fast access uh, in a, an environment like Couchbase. Great, thanks. Uh, a question around geospatial queries. Does Couchbase support geospatial queries? So uh, as of 2.0, um, geospatial is an experimental feature, so it's not, um, you know, officially supported. Uh, but that is something that we are considering, you know, uh, uh, that kind of uh, stuff is something that we're considering to mature in, in, in the upcoming future releases. Okay, great. Got a couple questions about storing the log data for reporting. So uh, could you talk a little bit about that, specifically storing content filtering data that would generate a row for every single web request in a traditional RDBMS. Um, so Baxter, can you please repeat that question, please? Yeah, there's a question about storing the log data uh, in Couchbase for reporting on it, such as uh, in a traditional database where uh, you would generate a row for every single web request. Um, so. I mean, uh, for log data, I mean, uh, given the fact that, uh, so for every, my understanding is, your question is, for every single uh, web request, you have some kind of logging that is done. Um, and you, you, know, you can use a database like Couchbase to do that. So, it, you know, you have, so your log, your log, uh, log record could have multiple fields, and, you know, if you can store these multiple, this log uh, information in a JSON format, then definitely you can, you know, store it uh, in Couchbase, and then 
use indexing and querying and all those cool uh, features to kind of get some kind of insight into your log data. Great. I think we have time for one or two more questions. Here's one of there's one about Couchbase and full text search. So how does Couchbase solve or how does Couchbase handle uh, full text searching? Sure. So, um, so what what we have uh, for Couchbase and full text search is something called uh, the Elasticsearch uh, plugin. So the uh, the Couchbase plugin for Elasticsearch, what it does is it integrates Couchbase server with full text search. And uh, the way it works at a high level is whenever you store a document and it get, gets written to disk in Couchbase, that get document gets streamed, uh, you know, uh, to the Elasticsearch cluster. So it, uh, the, the setup of this would be, it would be something like you have a Couchbase cluster running, and you have an Elasticsearch cluster running, and using the Elasticsearch adapter for, uh, you know, uh, Elasticsearch adapter that we provide, you can take your data in Couchbase and stream it uh, to Elasticsearch. And then you can do, you know, whatever, you know, the, uh, the features provided by Elasticsearch, like, you know, faceted navigation and things like that, uh, you could, you know, use that on your data because it's already streamed and available in Elasticsearch. So you could uh, use the, uh, that information and then in Elasticsearch. So uh, in theory, from an application perspective, you will have two APIs. You'll have an API for, you know, getting documents from Couchbase and you'll have a search DSL API that talks to Elasticsearch. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's complete this example where you have a simple search query and you're searching for bicycles. If you're searching for bicycles, you would first send uh, that bicycle keyword to Elasticsearch. Uh, Elasticsearch uh, will retrieve, it will give you a bunch of document IDs uh, for which that uh, search query matches. And then you, once you get the document IDs, Couchbase is really quick once you have a bunch of document IDs. So you pass the document IDs to Couchbase and through the Couchbase API and get those document IDs, uh, the, those document values back from Couchbase. So that's at a high level how your app will work with Elasticsearch and Couchbase. Great. Uh, for those of you who are, are asking, I'm going to address your question on the session today. We'll try and follow up after the session to make sure that we get those questions addressed. But please continue to ask them, and at the end of the session, we'll answer as many as we possibly can. Back to you, Don. Thanks, Baxter. So uh, now let's look at, uh, you know, uh, from now on, let's look at, you know, how you can take, uh, you know, your, 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 you have a, a relational app and, you, and you're thinking about using Couchbase server. And let's think about, uh, let's look in the next few slides about, you know, uh, what is the mental mindset you need to have when you're trying to use a NoSQL database like Couchbase? What's some of the document modeling things you have to think about, uh, you know, when you move uh, your application uh, from a relational database to Couchbase? So let's start with some of the mental adjustments. So uh, in SQL, we always think, uh, think about, you know, we want to avoid hitting the database as much as possible. And, uh, you know, that's not wrong because, you know, uh, SQL, uh, there's, uh, SQL cannot be scaled very easily, right? So uh, with a NoSQL database like Couchbase, you have these gets and sets operations, and they're done in memory. And, and this is very fast compared to, you know, a relational database uh, setup. Uh, the next thing you need to think about is uh, the fact that the key to finding the data is the key of the document. Uh, so that uh, that's very important because um, the key is, if you have the key of the document, uh, you can basically retrieve the document. If you want to write a document to Couchbase, you need to specify a key and then pass it that value um, of the document body, right? And um, that is very powerful because it uh, it's different than you know how you would think uh, from a relational uh, uh, mindset point of view where you would you know have a table and you'll have to insert your records to match exactly match uh, the the schema uh, of your underlying tables uh, in a relational database. The other cool thing is the fact that um, with the Couchbase you can also say do index indexing and querying on your documents. So uh, I would like to say that they are like SQL-like in the sense that uh, you know they can you can you can create views that give you a subset of your data back, and uh, these can be very powerful, right? So there's one way we talked about you know if you have if you have the keys, you can definitely get your documents back. So basically, if you would like to get all your documents back, you better know all the keys. Uh, but with indexes, uh, you know you could get a subset of your documents back without knowing the keys. For example. Um, I want to create, a, for example, if you want to get a, create an application where you have a bunch of documents uh, stored about uh, customers, 
and uh, you want to you want to retrieve only the documents where the customer uh, is in, in the US, right? So using uh, a secondary index uh, that we will see in the later slides, you can build a view in Couchbase that allows you to you know get back uh, a subset of documents that have uh, that meet this criteria. So uh, just tying that with a you know a simple example, uh, so I, I won't go into this example in very detail. Uh, but what I want you to take away from this is the fact that um, on the left uh, you have uh, you know a relational query and that relational query has uh, uh, joins and in this case you know joins with multiple tables and also an order by clause at the end. Uh, comparing that with a NoSQL kind of programming mindset, uh, you, you you can think about it as having multiple GET requests. So you know you get the shopping cart ID, all you do is you get a particular key or a value corresponding to a particular key. You want to get the you know the items in your cart. You just uh, you know you pass in you know um, the shopping cart ID in a creative. You you build a key in a creative manner, uh, and you you know you get the uh, get the value associated with that key, right? And uh, so say you want to process all your items in the cart. You just have you know a loop that basically does something, uh, some work to all the items that you have in your cart. So uh, you know very simple kind of uh, you know get set kind of uh, programming methodology. That you would, uh, you know, typically use in something like a NoSQL database versus very complex, uh, you know, queries with you know multiple joins and order by uh, clauses that you would have to build if you are using a relational database. So uh, let's talk next a little bit about uh, you know document modeling and why uh, document modeling is very important. So um, we talked a little bit about you know the first thing is you know you have to have this mindset um, of uh, you know when you're when you're writing an app uh, for uh, you know a NoSQL database and at a high level you know it's not it, it, not, not worrying about you know hammering the database too much but also you know this concept of having gets and sets uh, for uh, for your documents. The next thing is you know how do you model your documents uh, in a NoSQL database like Couchbase and uh, and to do that there's uh, you know a couple of uh, you know I would so call them guidelines right. So think of uh, think of a logical container for your data. So in the relational world, you have a table. A table stores a, a bunch of records, and you know that is kind of a logical container uh, for your data rows. Uh, in Couchbase, we have buckets, and a bucket is um, uh, analogous to a table in uh, in the relational world. And a bucket can have uh, uh, data stored in the form of documents. So you could have multiple documents. Uh, you know, as I said, with different schema. Uh, different schema in each of the documents, so you don't require to have one schema for every single document in a bucket. The next thing is, think about how uh, data is grouped together. So, um, as we saw in the previous examples, uh, in the relational world, uh, you would, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, normalize your data. You would, you know, split it across multiple tables. But whenever you're thinking about, you know, developing your app on a NoSQL database. Think about your application access patterns. Think about, um, you know, uh, do I always get data from table one and table two? If so, would it make sense to, you know, combine this data in a single document in in Couchbase? So those are some of the things you need to think about. Where, uh, uh, how is your data grouped together? How are your access patterns uh, typically in your app? So those uh, those are some of the considerations you'll have to think about. The next thing is, uh, uh, and the guide, one of the best way to start doing that is by start starting to create documents from application level objects. So say you're using an ORM kind of um, uh, system to access uh, your database. So your, or, your ORM kind of uh, you know, models classes to you know, some kind of relational query. So you can think about um, uh, ha having each of those classes and modeling each of those classes as a document. Right, so each of your classes has all the attributes it needs uh, for for that particular application object, and uh, which translates to uh, the document having all the attributes it needs for that particular entity. Uh, the next thing to think about is you know how your data um, uh, is accessed in the sense that uh, from the client's perspective, um, do you uh, if you have multiple um, uh, if you have multiple clients. Uh, heavily writing uh, to this one particular document, it makes sense. It may make sense to split this document into two sub documents. So we'll see that uh, in the next uh, in the next few slides. How in the case of a blog, uh, you may have uh, you know a blog document and the comments document. 
typically what happens in the blog space, for example, is the fact that uh, you, you, have, you have a great blog, but you have a lot of comments uh, uh, by users who are reading that blog. So the blog body does not change, but the comment, uh, the number of comments and the comment uh, uh, comments keep on increasing. In this case, it may make sense to you know split out the comments into a separate uh, document. Uh, so two high-level things here. So uh, in terms of design options, when you're thinking about you know modeling your data, uh, one thing is you know one document that contains all related data. So we saw this fact that you know you could have a single document that has all all your data, and it is better from a performance standard uh, point standpoint because now you, you know these accesses are in memory, and it also eliminates joins. The fact that now, you know, compared to a relational database, you don't have to do worry about joins of growing across tables to be to be able to stitch all this data together. And uh, but one thing you need to think about is is if your document grows continuously uh, or has a high write contention, then it has to be split. So we talked a little bit about the blog example here. So if the again, you know, if the comments grow at a very high rate, it may make sense to you know split. Uh, you know the blog, the actual blog body, and the comments into two separate documents. Then there's the other side where you have the uh, you have you have separate documents for different object types with cross cross references. So for this, where uh, you know uh, you would have you could reduce some uh, duplication where you could you know split these documents. But one thing you have to realize here is the fact that uh, these documents are not co-located. And let me explain uh, you know what that means. So um, in a table, uh, you would uh, in a relational database, you would have uh, uh, you know the tables maybe on the same node. So which what you have to do is when you do a join, you just go across that other table uh, on the same node. Uh, with with a NoSQL database, uh, we use uh, you know auto sharding and consistently consistent hashing to hash uh, your uh, your documents, and this hashing is done on the document ID or the key of the document, and um, you know, whenever you add a document in Couchbase, that key, you know, you, you take the document ID, you hash it, and then put the document in one of the node in, in, a, in a Couchbase cluster. Definitely, there are replica copies of those documents on other nodes. But the fact here is, you know, these documents may not be co-located. So if you split a document, you know, going back to our blog example, uh, if you have the blog body and the blog comments, it could be possible that your blog comments document might be hashed onto some other node while the blog body is on another node. So that's something that you may want to keep in mind. Uh, there's also this fact about transactions. So um, Couchbase today does not support uh, transactions across documents. So if you have, uh, if your application requires you uh, to, to set up a transaction boundary, where you, you, know, you access multiple tables uh, you know, uh, within a transaction, um, Couchbase uh, allows you to do you know, atomic operations on a single document not across documents. So that's something that you have to keep in mind uh, whenever you're modeling uh, your data for Couchbase. Uh, there's also this fact about, uh, you know, I, I talked about not supporting joins. So uh, whenever you think there are joins, it may make sense to, you know, either put them in a single document or, you know, split them, you know, if the growth of that uh, uh, subset of the document is growing very fast, it may make to split them. But uh, there is no, um, uh, instead of joins, what we have is multiple get operations as we saw in the previous slide. So the next thing is now, you know, you, you have some idea about, you know, uh, modeling the documents. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to talk about is key selection. So key selection is very important um, in a NoSQL database. And keys are hard to change at a later point. Uh, so you can think about IDs, you know, as similar to primary keys uh, in an, in a relational database, and, and um, you know they are unique, so they have to be unique. And in this case, uh, in Couchbase, uh, you have to have an ID can only appear once in a bucket, just because you know. Think of, as I said, the bucket is analogous to a table, so it is important to have uh, this ID uh, unique uh, and appear only once in a bucket. Uh, on the other hand, you know. Uh, Due to the you know object managed cache uh, um, in Couchbase, you can do extremely fast lookups on this document. So you have you specify the ID of the document, and you can look up uh, you know the value um, uh, of the document from Couchbase. And we also touched a little bit on about uh, you know the way documents are partitioned. So we use uh, uh, consistent hashing to be able to you know spread uh, spread the documents across all the nodes in the cluster. So then in that 
by doing that, your workload, um, you know, suppose you're doing, you know, uh, an operation where you want to uh, uh, update or, you know, select from multiple documents all, or get multiple documents, these accesses just don't go to one node. They get spread across the cluster and that evens out uh, your workload across the cluster. So uh, some of the typical ways, you know, in which you can, you can select uh, um, IDs are things like UUIDs or date-based IDs or numeric IDs. So sometimes, you know, think about, you know, SIN numbers for, or think about, you know, uh, employee numbers, which are unique. Uh, similar kind of things that you would think about, you know, when you're doing, uh, when you select a primary key for a relational database. Some of these could also be handcrafted, something like, uh, you know, uh, human readable, things like matching prefixes. Uh, we saw earlier, you know, how a, uh, the customer cart, or the cart ID uh, is, uh, you know, used, uh, uh, you kind of join some common string with the customer ID to form some kind of a key, right? And uh, those are some of the things we'll also talk about in the next few slides on creative keying, on how you can creatively use uh, your primary keys to get access to your documents. So just wrapping it up with this, uh, you know, uh, the example, you know, uh, we, we roughly talk, talked about uh, in the last few slides, it's about the, you know, having a user profile, you have blog post and you have blog comments. And um, uh, for, you can think about um, uh, a single document uh, that uh, encapsulates all the information. So this is one option where you would have one single document that not only has the, the author information, the title of information, but also, you know, the body of the blog, the comments of the blog, and so forth. So uh, this is an example where everything is in one document. And, um, you know, when you're thinking about, you know, uh, coming up with keys for, uh, you know, a NoSQL database, uh, you know, these are some of the patterns you could, you know, think about, right? So one of the example is, um, you know, creative keying, the counter, uh, the, uh, the counter ID pattern, right? So in this case, you know, the goal is to get unique keys. And so what you do here is you have a user count and the user count um, is incremented. You have the incur, uh, you know, atomic increment function. And what you can see on line number 16 is every time a document, a user document is added uh, into Couchbase, um, you know, uh, we kind of have a unique uh, user ID that is generated because we kind of go through this uh, code of incrementing the counter. Right? And this kind of pattern can be um, uh, really useful for things like creating a list. You know, you have a list of blogs, right? Or uh, you have a globally referenced document with a unique key. So those are things where this pattern is really useful. Another pattern is the lookup pattern. So, you know, assume that, uh, you know, you want to get access to this one single document through different sources. So you want to get access to Dawn, uh, you know, the document having, you know, Dawn's information but uh, you want to get access to it through my username or my email address or my Facebook ID, right? And uh, to set this up, you know, you would have, um, uh, you would have the same do document which is referenced by new underscore ID. And you could build up uh, keys, you know, to, you could build up uh, uh, keys to kind of reference that same document through different ways. So in the first case on line number four, you can see something to reference new ID based on username. Similar, you know, you can do that same with, same with email addresses, same with the Facebook ID. And this can be useful for, you know, categorical, you know, references. If you're trying to do, uh, you know, refers, build up a categorical references for some kind of documents, you can use something like this. Uh, we also talked a little bit about, you know, this option about splitting documents. So the, the fact that, you know, if you have a lot of comments, uh, you can see here how, uh, you know, using some of the creative keying techniques that we, we, we saw in the previous slides, uh, this kind of uh, splitting, uh, these comments are kind of split into a separate document. In this case, you have comment one underscore, uh, you know, hello, uh, you know, Couchbase hello world. And, you know, it's that, um, uh, it's the ID pattern that is used to increment, you know, every time a new comment comes in. And it is split into separate documents due to the fact that you know maybe the you know this document this particular blog is really popular, and there's a lot of you know comment posts, and that's one reason why you would do a split like this. Uh, we also thought about uh, talked a little bit about um, you know how some of the patterns can be used for building you know uh, a list of uh, an incremental list. So in this case, you know you can use some of the patterns we studied earlier. To build um, um, uh, to build a scenario where you would have a, a comment and then a reply to the comment 
and maybe a reply to the reply to the comment and so forth. So all this kind of threaded structure can be, you know, kind of being wrapped inside uh, some of uh, the documents uh, as we saw earlier. And this is useful for a couple of things, right? So I talked a little bit about, you know, uh, how, you know, by splitting these documents into multiple sub documents, you can spread the data and load across the cluster. So that's, you know, um, very useful because now your all your load doesn't just go to one node. It is spread evenly across the cluster. Uh, and also the fact that uh, you only fetch the data you need. So, you know, if you're having something, you know, if you're rendering only a part of the web page, uh, you don't really need to fetch the comments, right? So if you don't really need to fetch the comments, let's just fetch the blog, uh, the blog body, and not the comments. So that's one of the advantage of doing something like this as well. Uh, so with this, I'd like to go and uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the Java Pet Store app. So this is uh, an app uh, which is very famous in the J2E community, and uh, we let in the next few slides we'll kind of see. Um, you know, what is the, you know, ER diagram for this uh, app on a relational side and some of the changes uh, um, yeah, and thinking you have to do uh, if you consider, you know, building this app on you know, a NoSQL database. So the first thing is a quick run through of the ER diagram for the pet store app. So um, you, can, you can see here that, you know, these are some of the entities of this app. You have the customer, the customer has many orders and an order has many order lines. And uh, within, you also have categories and, you know, you have uh, products that belong to, uh, you have categories and there are many products for, you know, for one of the category could have many products. And then you would have uh, many items also in a product line. And the first thing is the fact that, um, you know, definitely the mindset, uh, you know, when you're writing your app for a NoSQL database, uh, but also this fact that you need to think about, you know, how you model these, uh, these documents now. So starting with the, you know, observation we learned from the previous slide that, you know, think about, you know, how you would take your application level objects and model them. Uh, you know, just applying that here, you can see that we have uh, three documents. We have the customer document, we have the order document, we have the category document. Uh, the customer document has all the information for this given customer. Uh, the order document has, you know, the information um, of the customer, some of the, you know, the order lines, and then the category document has, uh, you know, the category name as well as the products and the items that roll up to this category. Now, now assuming that you have, you know, done the job of, you know, modeling your documents and, you know, getting the data um, uh, into Couchbase, the next step to be, could be to, you know, how do we uh, uh, query this data that is stored in Couchbase? And before I go into that, I'd like, you know, have to, I'd like to give a quick refresher on um, indexing. So we talked a little bit about primary indexes. So uh, primary indexes are built on the IDs of the documents, and these IDs of these documents have to be unique. So in this case, you know, you have you can see um, an index which is comprised of a map and a reduce function, and uh, the map function and reduce function are written in JavaScript. So with the map function here, you can see that we have. Uh, uh, we emit the meta.id, which is the ID of the document, and uh, the results, if you look at the results panel below, you can notice that, you know, they're unique. And the next thing is secondary indexes. So now assume that, you know, you want to, you know, get only the names of, uh, you have a, you have these bunch of documents loaded, but you only want to get the names uh, um, associated with these documents. So if the doc so basically, if the document has a name attribute, then you want to be able to emit that. Uh, so by building a secondary index on the name attributes, so in this case, we're building a secondary index on name, so doc.name. And uh, by doing that, uh, you know, as, as shown in the results, you can see that uh, uh, this map function is applied to, you know, all the documents and uh, uh, in that, uh, all the documents in the bucket, and then you, you, you're getting a result which only emits the name um, uh, if the document has a name field. So if the document does not have a name field, then that document is uh, skipped and you go to the next document. Uh, the next thing is uh, uh, like, you know, going back to our pet store app, right? I mean, uh, applying some of these um, concepts uh, that we just uh, saw about, uh, you know, primary and secondary indexes to uh, the pet store app. So assume we want to do, uh, you know, list of all the item categories. So we want to get um, all the cat uh, list of all the item categories, and you know we want a simple map function that goes across all the documents, 
And if the document is of type category, then we want to get the ID. So what, as you can see in this JavaScript uh, code here, uh, all you have is, you know, we go and see if the document uh, type has a type field. If the type field exists and is of type category, then we basically go and, uh, you know, emit the ID uh, of that particular document because we know that document is of type category. Now, let's say we want to find items by name. So if you want to just emit all the, you know, a list of all the items by name, uh, this is a little bit more complicated uh, thing. But basically what it does at a high level is it loops because you notice that, uh, you know, the product a document we saw earlier has a bu bunch of items underneath that. So it, 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 it is a nested, uh, it's a nested document. And due to the fact is it is nested, you have to have, uh, you know, these uh, for loops that, uh, iterate over this document. So uh, iterate over items within this document. So you would have this for loop which goes across, uh, if the document is of type product, then you would get all the items in that, uh, you know, item list in those, uh, in that product document. And once you fetch the item list, then you would just go into and get emit all the names of those items in that, uh, in that item list. So that's what you would do at a high level. So that's a little bit on the server side. So from the application side, what are the, you know, you know, changes, right? So assuming that you're done, you know, you have a, you know, Apache Durbuy kind of calls, uh, and you want to move those things to Couchbase. Um, I think there's a kind of a one-to-one -one mapping you can see here. So, you know, I just, you know, touching upon, you know, high level operations like find, save, update, delete. You can see that, you know, a find uh, where you could create a named query in Derby would be, you know, could be mapped into something like a, a get request to Couchbase. Save, which you translate to a set request in Couchbase. Update, uh, you know, you can translate to a replace request. And similar, you know, delete would just, you know, go and translate to a delete request. And what I'm showing you here is just a subset of our API. Uh, one thing to realize is Couchbase uh, supports, you know, a rich API in, uh, you know, multiple languages. We support, you know, Java, .NET, PHP, Ruby, C, and C++. So uh, with all these, uh, you know, different um, SDKs available, uh, you can get much more than what you can see on the slide. Right? So it's something that you can go and check out later. With that, uh, I'd like to open the floor for any kind of questions that you guys have. Great. Thanks, Don. There's uh, certainly a number of good questions here. So let's start with uh, monitoring in Couchbase. What kind of monitoring tools are available uh, for folks who are using Couchbase? So in terms of monitoring, um, so we definitely have the admin dashboard. Um, so um, uh, so we have two two ty types of monitoring. You can you know use the admin dashboard and get a, a drill down of all the different metrics. We have over 200 metrics, everything from you know how is the disk getting utilized to how is the queues getting flushed to how is the replication working. So very fine grained metrics that you can um, you know see. Uh, in a graph format in our admin console UI. So that's one way you can, you know, visually monitor the system. Um, and this is, you know, at a cluster level as well as a per node level. So it allows you to do it at a, you know, how is my things working at a cluster level? How are my things working at a per node level? Uh, we also support, uh, you know, uh, Nagios plugins, uh, things that you can, you know, REST APIs that you can use to get some statistics from your Couchbase cluster. And uh, those are more, I would consider them to be the programmatic ways uh, how you can monitor your cluster. Great, thanks. Uh, question here about document versioning. So how does Couchbase support document versioning? Uh, so documents in Couchbase are, uh, you know, every time you have um, a new, uh, so say you have a document, the first time you put the document in Couchbase, it is assigned some, uh, you know, log, uh, logical timestamp version. Uh, the next time you, you know, uh, read that document, update the document and write it back, uh, you know, we, we update, uh, you know, the version number. And, uh, you know, we have a set of fields like, you know, um, uh, the flags, uh, uh, the time, the timestamp, and a bunch of fields through which uh, we call as the logical timestamp which is used for versioning. So there's a bunch of fields, not just the timestamp, but a bunch of fields which are used in combination uh, to version documents. Great, thanks. Uh, there's a question about would you, and I, you spoke to this a little bit in the blog example, but uh, about storing all information in one document. So say for an example, you have a user profile and that user has a large data set of images. 
would you store all of that content in one large document, or would you have separate documents that reference one another? Um, so it depends totally on the you know on the access pattern. So it goes back to you know there's no silver bullet to say this is the way you know this is the way that all apps should go. Uh, uh, it, it totally depends on you know uh, as I said the access patterns of your app. So you may see that in some cases it may make sense to put everything into one document. But if you see a lot of writes, um, um, you know, for example, going back to the blog case, if you see a lot of comments, then it may make sense to split this up. And just because you know you're you know, from a from a, from the website point of view, uh, you may have a page that just requires to show uh, you know the the actual blog and not the comment. And if you didn't split it up, what that would mean is every time you do a read. You know, assuming it is not you know in the in memory, and every time you do a read, uh, then you would basically have to uh, you know read this entire document, you know, including the comments uh, stuff, even though you don't use the comments in your app, right? So it totally depends on your app. There's no silver bullet answer for this. Great, makes sense to me. So a uh, question from Deepali, uh, being a my SQL guy, are there foreign keys in Couchbase? Uh, if so, how would foreign keys be managed? Uh, so there's no integrity checking on these keys. So as you saw in uh, you know the blog example, uh, uh, you would have uh, you know the document ID of document two uh, or your blogs, uh, your uh, your blog comments stored as a list in um, in the document one. But there is no explicit integrity checking by the database to maintain these foreign key relationships. It's totally app driven at this point. Okay, great. Uh, there's a question: if, if a key is not unique, what kind of response would Couchbase return? Um, so basically, Couchbase will return you an error code saying that uh, you know this key already exists, and you know you need to um, you, know, you know retry the operation with another key value that is unique. Great. Uh, in the Couchbase UI. Uh, is there ability to see the documents and uh, what is stored inside them? Yes. So with our UI today, um, uh, what you can do is you can actually go and see a subset of the documents. You can also page through all your documents, uh, you know, that you have, and uh, you can also select one particular one, uh, one particular document, and see actually what's uh, inside UI. I think I highly recommend that you check it out. Okay, uh, great. At this time, I think uh, that's all the time we have for questions. Uh, for those folks who uh, whose questions we weren't able to get to, we'll certainly try to follow up via email. And also, if you have any other questions that have come up and, and you'd like a response, uh, you can feel free to email into us. Uh, the email address is don at couchbase.com. And of course, you can reach them via Twitter at the handle uh, NoSQLDon as well. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to join our webinar today and asking such great questions. Uh, we hope to see you at a future webinar. Thank you very much and have a great day.